myself, so I'm Dora from City and Mills, and if you read my title, you probably read really dry and boring, but in real life what I do is I work internationally, and I work with external organisations to build progression. So it's all about helping those who come through the City and Mills route, or other organisations route, what is it, that, how can they progress their careers, how can they progress their, um, their studies. So I would like to tell you about a really exciting project that we have been working with uh, World Chefs, and I don't think there are many chefs in the room, but in case you don't know who World Chefs are, they are a global organization, and they represent national chefs associations around the world. So you have got 105 member countries, and each of those countries would have a chefs association, whose task is really about setting standards, raising standards, making sure that within the culinary industry, you actually have got people who are performing to the best possible um, of their abilities. And World Chefs is acting like an umbrella organization for them. And they have come to us because Within the culinary industry, you've got two main challenges. One is the fact that the workforce, by the nature of the industry, is really mobile. So people, regardless of what level you are working at, you actually move around the world. And the second challenge that I've got is there's a huge skill shortage. So if you went down to that jazz bar that is playing really nice and loud music, you probably would find that half of their staff is actually not even from Europe. So that's very natural that people travel around. And it creates a huge challenge because employers are finding it really, really difficult to tell what skills the individuals who are applying for jobs actually have got. And secondly, again, not just within the culinary industry, but particularly in the culinary industry, people would leave formal education when they are probably like 18 or 20. So if you are familiar with English education, they would leave at a level or two, maybe at a level or three, and then they just get into a job and they just progress in the job. So they pick up leadership skills, they pick up all the things that we talked about, but it doesn't actually get recognized. Because those guys work 14, 16 hours a day and they don't have the time you know, to go back to a college environment. And they're actually not interested because they want to be shown, they want to be out there. So putting a long story short, we have worked with World Chefs. And is it the forward one? Yes. We have created what is genuinely the first global certification for the culinary industry in the world. So actually, you might be surprised, but there isn't a global standard out there for culinary professionals. And what we have done, you can see those nine badges, and the nine badges, as you will see on the next slide, <coughs> I'm going to skip the next slide, it represents the career progression within the culinary industry. So when you go there, this is where you would normally start, so you're a professional cook, and then you would go all the way up to master chef, master pastry chef, and we also recognize the people who actually educate them, so the cleaner educated. And again, that's often a group which gets neglected. So you've got the mentors, the coaches, the teachers, and they don't often get the recognition, especially not in this industry. And here they have got an opportunity to apply. The, the pink line there shows you where typically people would leave formal education. So even for our city and guilds, we would, if I can use the term, we would lose them at that point. And then they go into the industry, and if they've got a lot of money, like in America, you can do a master chef program for about $10,000, and you go away and you are tested for a week. And I think to date, less than 100 people in the whole of the US have achieved it. And otherwise, you know, you don't really have something which is really recognized. So that's really the gap that World Chefs is trying to fill. And the great thing about this, we talked about showing people what you can do, showing employers what you can do. You have to be in employment to be able to apply for these badges. So one of the key criteria, you have to be working. Because what you do, you literally gather evidence from your day-to-day -day work. So if you're not asking them to go off and do things, you can prepare a dish, you take a photo, you make a video of your dish. You go to your line manager, you ask them to just confirm, yes, I am doing these things. So you are able to present what you do, but it's not asking you to go outside your day-to-day -day work. And the other great thing about it is that you can come in at any point. So you can choose to come in, and as you are progressing, you go all the way up. But you can actually come in at executive chef level, and then go on to master chef straight away. So you can see where you are, and just come in at that level. So you've got the industry body in this case. So World Chefs is the assurance that when you get this badge, what you are picking up, the skills that are being verified, they are actually relevant to the industry. Then very quickly, the employer can see, if you are applying for a new job, what is the level that you are working at, or you were working at when you got the badge. And when you click into the badge, you actually have got a date, which means that the employer can see, did you get it last month, or did you get it two years ago? It may not matter, but it gives them an indication how current the badge is. And if you got it, let's say, 15 years ago, they might think, okay, I need to find out more about the person, because I don't know what they did in the last 14 years, but hopefully the person would have actually got other badges, so you know you can see the progression. 
And very importantly, and it's not just because I'm from City and Guilds, but when you see the City and Guilds logo at the bottom, that actually gives you the assurance that this is a quality assurance scheme. So workshops, they understand the industry, but they don't really understand skills assessment. And this is where we come in. So when you see the two together, you see workshops, city and guilds, actually that tells you that there's a robust process behind it. These employers don't need to understand, but they need to know that there is that stamp of quality. So they need to know that it has gone through a process which has got a lot of technicalities sitting behind it. Very boring technicalities, but very important technicalities. And also, just to show you how it can be relevant to the industry, that we have created two routes into the certification. One is what I call the standard route, so that somebody deciding that, yes, I want to get certified, they go into a badge, they apply, they pay, and then they need to provide a range of evidence so that they can get certificated. But very importantly, we also created what we call the fast track route, and that's really recognizing other already existing quality assured certification out there. And the best example I can give you is around the uh, American Culinary Federation, which is one of the leading national chefs associations around the world. And they have been running their own uh, very successful certification scheme for years, for many years. They've got, I think, over 30,000 members. So we have mapped their certification to the World Chef certification. And through the Fast Step route, if somebody has already been certificated through ACF, they don't need to repeat all the assessment. We will literally take a confirmation of their achievement and they will be able to get a World Chef's badge. So again, it's just giving another layer, as well as being nationally recognized, they also get the global recognition through the World Chef scheme. And i leave you with a few thoughts. Again, you know, I'm not going to read it out, but this is a quote from, um, from a school in uh, Taiwan, and they were the very first school who came on board with the digital production when we launched it in December last year. And they were so keen that we actually had to hold them back and we needed to open the system, and they straight away had um, over 50 learners who they wanted to certify straight away. Um, and again, the quote just tell you that they found it incredibly successful because the employers uh, received it really, really well. And then just a couple of examples of people who have um, achieved the word chess badges. They are very, very, um, you know, very, very happy about that. So this person has applied for executive chef level, which is required so that he can go on to the master chef level. And uh, there was a lot of press coverage about it. And again, he displayed his badge. Several places, and finally, this is the president of World Chefs, uh, Thomas Kudler, and it just gives you um, a, a very nice quote from him, where he are just co he's commenting on the fact that there are genuinely millions of chefs around the world, and World Chef has set out to create something which is not going to be uh, prohibitive. They didn't want expensive. You know, you have to pay a, a fee because the assessors who work behind the scenes, their time costs money but they wanted to make it affordable and they wanted to make it something which can be accessible to anyone around the world.